Lovely to see you. Let's start, um, let's start lying down today. Let's start lying down. That sounds better already, doesn't it? I'll just come to stay seated. And that way, if anyone does drop out or joins us a little bit later, I might seem a bit dark on my, um, on my screen. I've got my light on, but hopefully you can see me there. So just bring yourself to lie down. And maybe if your back is um, paining you today, feel free to bring your knees in towards your chest. Maybe just have a little massage across the lower back, across the tops of the buttocks by just circling the knees round or a little bit of rocking back and forth or side to side. And that's sometimes um, just by bringing your knees, the act of bringing your knees in towards your chest um, can stretch out through the lower back. That's all you really need to do there for a very benign stretch across the back. Oh, there we go, someone else is coming in. And when you've done whatever you need to do, if you want to just bring yourself down to a comfortable lying position, and those of you with back issues might choose to keep your feet flat on the floor, maybe taking your feet a little wider apart and your inner knees might, might touch together, or stretch both legs out so you're lying in full supine position and the arms in whatever comfortable position you wish alongside you or resting on your chest or your belly. Lovely. Closing the eyes. Ah. That feels better already, doesn't it? So I thought we'd start with a little breath-based uh, meditation today. And I think some of us, um, you know, working from home or with this new routine where we're more in our own houses, we sometimes um, miss that decompression time, that time maybe when we drive home um, at the end of a day and we can kind of begin to let go of that day. And I think some of us now where we are at home all the time, it, with, with days and hours merging into the next, we need to create those moments where we kind of shift gear. And so even though it's a Sunday morning, you maybe have been rushing around this weekend, doing chores, catching up after maybe a week back at work or homeschooling or whatever it is you're doing. So let's just allow a moment to decompress, to shift the gears down a little bit. So even though you might just have walked into the room next door to do your practice, just imagine that that, that very act of just going into that room and closing the door, you've created now that little sanctuary, that little bubble. We talk a lot about bubbles at the moment too, don't we? This is your yoga bubble. creating this time in this space just for you. So as you just begin to drop into just the pace and rhythm, that unique rhythm of your breath, we'll start with this little breath-based meditation to bring us into our space, away from all of that busyness that lies ahead of us, or maybe nice behind us, the week just gone. So when you take your next inhale, just be aware and notice where you feel that breath more keenly. It might be in your chest, it might be in your belly, it might be in your throat. Just notice where you feel that breath. There's no right or wrong place, just you observe. Become an observer for a moment. And then on your next inhale, when you draw that breath into that place in your body where you feel the breath most keenly, and as you exhale, Allow the breath to travel down both arms and into the palms of your hands. So breathing in, feeling that breath, your chest or your belly. And then as you exhale, that breath travels down the arms into the palms of your hands. And we'll continue with that next inhale, wherever you feel it most keenly. And this time, exhale, send the breath down both arms into the very tip of your thumb, tips of your thumbs. And take your next inhale wherever you feel it the most. And exhale, sending that breath all the way down the arms to the tip of your first finger. Inhaling, slowing down that inhale fully and deeply. And exhale, imagine the breath traveling down the arms to the tip of your middle finger. Inhale, that lovely nourishing inhale. 
and exhale, sending the breath down to the tip of your ring finger this time. And breathing in fully and deeply. Breathing out as you send the breath all the way down to your little finger, all the way down to the tip of your little finger. And continue to breathe now, just bringing your awareness with each inhale into that space, that place where you feel it. And exhale, traveling the breath down the arms. Just the whole hand, the whole hand is the focus of your awareness now. Noticing any sensations in your fingers, in the palm of your hand. And so just by that very act of simply shifting your awareness, shifting your focus out of our mental space into our physical space, Again, just allowing that sense of decompression coming out of our busy minds and allowing us to really feel what's going on in our bodies today, our bodies and our breath. No matter where the hands are now, let's bring one hand onto your lower belly, one hand onto your chest. And take a couple of nice steady breaths there. And try to even up the breath so you're bringing the breath into the space beneath both hands. A couple of easy, steady breaths there. So, some of us, when we're busy, we tend to breathe into our chest. So, we're really encouraging the breath to begin to drop down into our belly. Don't force it if it's not happening for you. It might take a little time again, that decompression, that dropping out of our busyness. And as you release the hands down alongside you, palms up towards the ceiling, just keep the memory of that touch there. And again, continue to breathe as evenly as you can into your chest and your belly. And with the palms up towards the ceiling, just make a gentle fist, bringing the fingers into the palm and then open the hands out nice and wide. You might even match that movement with your breath. One movement, one breath, make a little fist and then open the palms nice and wide and we'll stretch between the fingers. Just keep the palms open this next time. You might just prop yourself up on your elbows a little bit so you can just twirl the hands around, a little bit of movement through the wrists there, circling through the wrists. It's really nice again if you've spent the week over a computer. And then twirl the wrists the other way around. Just try to keep the fingers moving as you do so. And then placing the arms down alongside you with your palms down this time. Let's all bring the heels in towards the bottom if you've got your legs outstretched or if your feet are wider apart, let's just bring them in, hip width apart. We'll start just that movement through the upper body and into the arms now, beginning to wake up the body, a little bit of somatic yoga. Somatics means to embody. So let's take the arms all the way up and over the head, maybe widening the arms into a wide V if that feels more comfortable on the shoulders there. And just pause over the arms above the head, either up arms alongside the ears or in that nice V. Try and soften the front ribs. So we're not arching the back. And maybe just drop the chin down towards your chest so the neck feels nice and long. Take a couple of nice breaths there into the sides of the body. And then we'll lower the hands all the way down alongside you as you exhale, palms down, fingertips lengthening towards toes. Let's do a couple more like that. Inhale, arms reach up above the head, wide V or alongside the ears, and then combining that movement with an exhale as you bring the hands all the way back down. Adding on, inhale, arms lift all the way up and back. This time as you exhale, just bring that right knee in towards the chest. So the hands gather around or behind the knee, just squeeze the knee in and down. And then when you're ready to inhale, bring the foot down and the arms reach all the way back. And then we just change legs. So we give the left knee a little squeeze on the exhale, emptying the breath. So just continue now. So you can work with alternate legs. Just bringing the knee in, giving a little squeeze. So we're getting a bit of a, a wake up call around the back into the hips. That we're gonna focus on a little bit this morning. Or maybe this last couple, if you wish, as you exhale, bring both knees in towards the chest and maybe nose to knee coming into that little tight ball. Pause before we bring the feet down, the upper body and reach the arms back. So just once more, either with the left leg or 
both knees squeezing on it, a little pause. And then slowly let's bring the feet down and the head down as the arms extend. And this time we'll just scoop the right knee into the chest. And that's where we'll all meet, right knee scooped in. And that knee might want to drop out towards your right armpit a little bit. Try and just draw your navel towards your spine. If the knee wants to open a little bit on the diagonal, let's kind of let it go there. My hip quite likes that little stretch there. And then you might just want to use your right hand to bring the left hand to your hip as you begin to circle that right knee. So it really doesn't matter which direction you're going, almost intuitively let the body lead you there. It tends to kind of know what it wants. So it might be clockwise, anti-clockwise, just a few circles, trying to keep that left knee relatively still there. And the next time you bring that knee in towards the chest, let's bring that stretch into the hamstring by holding behind the leg and extending the leg up towards the ceiling. Keep the hands quite low down towards the bottom, maybe a softness in the knee to support the leg. And we'll just circle the ankle this time, checking in with the shoulders and the face, making sure the neck stays nice and long as you spread the toes. And then just take that round the opposite way. Yeah, just giving that foot a little bit of a stretch. And then very gently, just bring the toes down towards your face, begin to stretch that heel up towards the ceiling, not too much, opening up through the back of the knee. And then gently point the toes. So we're not kind of going to that full on maximum stretch at the beginning of a practice. As we do that once more, flexing, it's kind of about 70% of where you could go just to warm up through the body. Then softening the foot slightly, relax the right arm down alongside you, palm up, and just bring the left hand to the outside of your shin or your thigh. And we'll bring that right leg across the body. That right buttock will lift from the floor a little bit. But again, we're trying to keep that left knee pointing up towards the ceiling. So we should feel a stretch across that outer thigh. Maybe down the outer thigh there. That's it, yeah. But we're not moving that left leg too much. Lovely. And then we'll bring that leg back to centre. I'm going to bring, prop myself up on my right elbow so my hand is pointing up towards the ceiling. So as I open my right leg out to the right this time, I can catch it just from underneath. Giving a little bit of support, rolling onto the outside edge of that left foot if that feels nice, stretching that right heel away from you, pulling the toes towards your face. So we're getting a nice inner thigh stretch. But just by extending one of those really heavy levers of the legs, we're not overloading the back. Nice stretch of the inner thigh. Slowly, let's come back to centre, planting that left foot to the floor. Right knee, right leg points up towards the ceiling. And if you wish, you can just walk your hands up a little higher, up that right leg, bringing the leg in towards you, but be really mindful of what happens to your back. You might want to peel yourself up, bringing your nose towards your knee, neck stays long. You might just extend now that left leg and just hover the heel off the floor. So it's a little bit of work in the core there. Bring those elbows in towards that right knee or thigh so we're not flailing the elbows out to the sides. Beautiful. And then we'll all lower that left heel and bring your head and your shoulders down. We'll keep that right leg up towards the ceiling there. If you kept your left foot on the floor, slide that left leg out nice and long so we've all got the left toes pointing up towards the ceiling. Beautiful. And bring that right knee in towards the chest once more. We're going to come into a half happy baby. So you might just want to hold on in front or behind the knee and bring that right knee down towards your right armpit, trying to keep that left foot pointing up towards the ceiling there and try and avoid rolling too much over to your right side. And those of us with a bit more movement in our hips, you might lift up your head and take hold around the inside or the outside edge of that right foot, lowering the head. We extend that right foot up towards the ceiling. So the shin is perpendicular to the floor and we're bringing that right knee down towards your outer ribs there. So if that's a little bit too much too soon, again, you keep the knee bent and just bring the knee down towards the armpit. And those of you, again, with a little bit more gas in the tank in that hip, you might hook your big toe with your first few fingers and extend that right leg out to the right. A little bit of playful fun there. So, but avoid rolling. So one side you might find that feels okay. Notice what's happened to that left foot. Is it still pointing up towards the ceiling? Keep pressing that left heel into the floor. Oh, lovely. Let's all bend that right knee from happy baby or leg extended. And bring the right knee into the chest and then bring the left knee into the chest. Have a little rock side to side. A little massage out and then feet come down to the floor. 
hip width apart, we'll try that on the left leg. So inhaling, float the arms all the way up and back. And as you exhale, let's scoop that left knee in towards the chest. Give a little squeeze. Again, it might just want quite naturally to open out towards your armpit. Just kind of let it go there if that feels nice to know. And then we take those little circles. So I like to bring my right hand just onto the top of that right hip as I circle my knee. And kind of feel what's going on then. I'm not moving too much across my pelvis. I'm trying to bring the movement into my hip. Lovely. So whatever direction feels nice there. That's it. And then we'll bring the knee to the chest, interlacing the hands around the back of the thigh. The lower your hands are towards your bottom, the more you'll support that hamstring as you stretch the legs up. So some of us with more open hamstrings, you might be sliding the hands up a little higher, but try and avoid the knee joint. Take a little movement through the foot just by twirling the ankle a few times. Might be a few musical accompaniments as it clicks and crunches its way round. <laughs> Mine is this morning and then change sides. Little twirls. And then again, not too much, we just push the heel up towards the ceiling and bring the toes towards the face, opening up through the back of the knee and then just softly point the toes. So do that once more, so just exploring how that stretch feels, how it manifests on the front and the back of the ankle. And then just loosen off through the foot a little bit. Right hand this time comes to your shin or your thigh, left hand down to the floor, and we'll bring that left leg across the body. So although your left buttock will lift a little bit, we're trying to keep that right knee where it is and you can always kind of bring more energy to that stretch by pushing that left heel a little bit more firmly away from you so i can feel that quite keenly in my hip there lovely just seeing what everyone's doing lovely and then we'll bring the leg back through center i'm going to come onto my elbow of that left left arm so when i open that left leg out to the left i can just catch the leg from underneath giving it a bit of support allowing that right knee to swing open if it feels nice and again, if you push that left heel away from you, you'll feel that, that that deepens the stretch. You've not got to do anything else. Just kind of a bit more energy through that foot. And then we'll bring the leg back to center, bring that right foot to the floor. And you might, again, just walk the hands up a little higher, bringing the leg a little closer in towards you, maybe lifting up through the head, nose towards knee and maybe extending that right leg so the heel just hovers off the floor again, a bit more energy through that heel, squeezing the elbows in towards that extended leg. And then we'll lower that right leg, heel to floor, bring the head down and bring that left knee to your chest. So sliding that right leg out if you've not done so already. And again, that little happy baby variation, one side might need a little bit of different support. So either just holding on in front or behind that left knee, bringing it down towards the armpit, or lifting up the head, holding on to the inside or outside edge of the foot. And then as you lower the head, we take the sole of the foot up towards the ceiling. So that left knee is, is kind of down towards your armpit there. And this side on me feels far more comfortable in Half Happy Baby than that right side. So what I might try is stirruping my big toe with my First two fingers and maybe trying to extend a little bit of fun that left leg out to the left but just be mindful that you've not rolled too much onto that left bottom right foot still pointing up towards the ceiling thank you down i've forgotten that bit lovely and then wherever you are if you've got your leg extended let's come back through half happy baby and then bring that knee in towards the chest and we'll slide that right heel in. So both knees come to the chest, cross the ankles, widen the knees and have a little stir around with the knees, a little massage out through the back there and the hips. And then just change the cross of the ankles, change direction. We're gonna find our way into on four, onto all fours. So you might fall behind your knees and have a little rock up and down a couple of times through your spine if there's space. Or you might just roll to one side. So when you've had a little play, whoop, we'll find our way to all fours. I like that one. Now just make sure as you come onto fours that you've got space behind you because we're gonna slide ourselves back. So maybe just bring yourself a little further forward than you ordinarily would. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Let's start with that very familiar cat-cow. So if your shoulders feel tight today, take the hands a little bit further apart. So as you drop your belly, really try and get that movement from the tailbone, tailbone leading. Lifting the tailbone up, dropping the belly, keep pushing into the hands as you just lift the chest. Lovely, take a nice inhale. And then exhale again, tailbone leading. So we're keeping that focus on the lower body. 
grounding up by that angry cat. And then just roll with the breath, maybe close the eyes. Keep pushing into the hands, particularly when you dip your belly. Sometimes you kind of forget what's going on in the shoulders there. So let that movement be led by the tailbone. Again, shift your focus, come out of that thinking brain, come more into those physical sensations we're feeling. Feeling your sit bones spread as you inhale, and then the sit bones draw towards one another as you exhale. Do that just once more. Ooh, and that again should hopefully, if you're feeling tight in the back, might bring a little bit of release. And then finding that neutral spine, we'll come into our first one as we open up through the hips. So we'll slide the right leg back behind you, trying not to open that hip to the side. We just have a rock back and forth, fall of the foot to the floor, keeping the gaze just forwards of the fingertips. Now you might just want to stay here, or you begin to walk back towards that left knee, so you're sliding that right leg back behind you until you're almost sitting, or some of you might be sitting on that left heel. And if that isn't comfortable, just walk forwards and come back to that first position with your hips over your left knee and the right leg extended. Try and push that heel away from you and you should feel maybe a stretch through the front of your right hip. So it's a kind of pigeon variation there. Keep pushing the hands into the floor so the chest is lifted. Beautiful. And then we'll pad ourselves forward so we're back on all fours, knees under hips, hands under shoulders. Let's just take a cat cow here to release. Inhale, tailbone tilts up, belly drops, open the heart and then exhale, rounding the back. And then ready for that little pigeon variation other side. So left leg, slide it back. Just roll both hip bones down towards the mat. We'll rock back and forth, knowing that you can stay here. Or we walk back, so you're sliding that left leg off your mat very probably, and you're more or less sitting on that right heel. And try and square your hips up to the mat. Try and keep that back knee lifted if you can. I'm looking very tigerish today, aren't I? And uh, open up through the back of the knee, pushing it up towards the ceiling. And again, you should feel maybe a little stretch, might be quite a strong stretch in the top of the hip. If that isn't for you, again, just walk the hands forwards so you're back in that start position. Beautiful. And then walking back onto all fours, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. I've just realised the next pose is called Tiger. I'm looking very kind of wild animal like. I've not been watching Tiger King on Netflix, I promise you, unlike the rest of the world. So let's keep pushing the hands into the floor, keep the gaze forward as we bring that right foot up towards the ceiling, bending the knee. And just make sure that you're not opening your knee out to the side so the knee is roughly in line with the hip. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, we'll round knee to nose, so keep pushing into those hands, lovely. And then inhale, toes towards the ceiling. So we're getting an opening through the front of the hip, a little bit of work in the buttock, and then that nice stretch through the lower back. If you want to, you can extend the opposite arm, but keep a bend in the elbow, so there's a little softness in the elbow. So you're bringing your knee and your elbow towards one another underneath the body. And then inhale, maybe that left arm, but keep a softness there. Lovely, so we've got a bent knee and a bent elbow. Once more, so inhaling, you can just work the leg if you want. Beautiful. And then let's point the toes up towards the ceiling. And then extend that right leg all the way back behind you. And if you wish now, stretch out that left arm directly in line with the shoulder. So we're straightening off through the arm now. Lovely. And then try taking them out on the diagonal. Keep firming up through the belly. Keep the back nice and strong. Beautiful. Then come back through centre. Forwards and back with the arm. Once more out on the diagonal. Keep looking forwards. Embrace the wibble wobbles. Come back through centre. And then we'll bring the hands down and the knees down. You might just want to sit on your heels for a moment and give the wrist a little shake out there. It's a bit heavy on the wrist, that one. Sorry about that, guys. And then we'll try that little tiger on the other side. So hands under shoulders. This time we stretch the left leg back, bending the knee, point the toes up towards the ceiling. Again, just making sure that hip hasn't rolled open. Take an inhale and exhale that lovely rounding up through the back. Nose to knee. Then inhale, lifting the toes towards the ceiling again, both hip bones facing towards the floor. And then if you want to add that arm, this time the right arm, so you keep a little bend in the elbow, so it's a real softness there this morning. And then we scoop knee and elbow towards one another. So if you want to have a little bend in the elbow, a little crooked cross there. Lovely, just once more, you can always just work the leg. 
the softness. Beautiful. So we're focusing more on the hips. And then this time we'll extend that left leg back behind you. And if you want, right arm fires out straight in front of you, upper arm level with the shoulder. We'll just work the leg. If you're working arm and leg, let's take both out on the diagonal now. Firm up through the belly, keep looking forwards. Come back through centre, lovely. And then just once more, out on the diagonal. And then all the way back through centre. Bring the hands down, bring the knees down. Take the knees a little wider apart now. Point the big toes towards one another as you sit back towards your heels. Let's give the rest, uh, wrists a little bit of a rest there. So sliding the arms forwards, ease your way down into that hair pose or wide knee to child pose. And always pop a cushion between your heels and your bottom. A little bit for the upper body before we come back to the hips. So just pushing into that right hand so you've got space to thread that left arm underneath, coming into thread needle, looking under that right armpit and try and peel that right shoulder up towards the ceiling. So a little bit of opening, leaning towards that left shoulder blade there, stretching that left fingertips away from you. Lovely. And then slowly, slowly, let's feed that arm back from where it came and we'll change sides. So this time we're feeding that right arm through, checking that the arm is level with the shoulder as you bring the head down. And again, you're trying to peel that right uh, left shoulder open this time. So you're just taking a little shift of the weight and that in itself, you might feel a little stretch in the hips as well there. Beautiful. And then we'll stretch out both arms. Walk the hands back towards you. So you can lift the chest, point both knees forwards, and then back onto all fours. This time ready for a downward facing dog. So you can work in cat pose today. If downward dog isn't for you, just stay on all fours and do couple more rounds of cat cow or tuck the toes and then power the hips up towards the ceiling and let's have a little walk out soft squishy walk there bending one knee and then the other maybe a little shift of the hips side to side a shake of the head just make it nice and loose that first downward facing dog of the day beautiful and then when you find that that downward dog for you maybe you're bending the knees so you can really again get the sense of tilting your tailbone up towards the ceiling. So someone is pulling your hips up and back. So your arms are in line with the sides of the body. I like to take my gaze down to the middle of the mat rather than between my heels, but the choice is yours. So find a nice space wherever it feels comfortable for your neck. Press into your finger pads as well as the heel of the hand. I love you really distribute that weight across the hand. Beautiful. So we're going to work the right leg first of all. So you might just want to step your left foot into the middle of the mat for stability. Now we'll take the right leg all the way up and back behind. You can do this for more force. Bend the knee. We're going to circle that knee three times. So we brush the thighs together. And then we circle that knee out to the side. Pointing that knee up towards the ceiling as you can. And then we'll do that twice more. So nice big circles as big as feels comfortable. Not the most elegant of moves, but it doesn't matter, does it? because no one gets to see you apart from me. <laughs> and this next time that you've got that right knee pointing up towards the ceiling, heel dropping down towards your bottom, a little dog peeing on a lap post, just pause there for a moment. You can do it with more force. Try not to shift the weight too much into one hand or the other. And then squaring up through the hips, take a nice inhale and exhale, step, spring or help that right foot forwards. And we'll drop the back knee. So you've got the right foot by your hands. That's it, lovely. So as you inhale, let's come into that crescent lunge, sweeping the arms all the way up. Beautiful, and as you exhale, bring the fingertips down to frame the foot. Take a nice inhale as you shift the hips back. And as you exhale, lift the toes of that right foot as you sink back towards the left heel, half monkey stretch. Inhale, plant the foot, sweep the arms up. It's that little lunge, you're gonna do that twice or as you exhale, bring the hands down, frame the foot. Inhale, begin to move the hips back. And exhale, maybe lift the toes. Beautiful, last time. Inhale, last time into that lunge. Drop that left hip forward as you sweep up. Exhaling as you bring the hands down, beautiful. Inhale, we lift the hips. Exhale, back into that little hamstring stretch. And then we'll all meet in that crescent lunge. Inhale, reaching the arms all the way up. Lovely, so turn the palms inwards, reach up towards the, the ceiling, but just drop the shoulders there. Beautiful. 
and then we'll reach the right hand down towards the right, down towards the floor. Fingertips might reach the floor depending on depth of lunge and length of arms. We're reaching that left arm overhead. Beautiful. Then inhale, come back to that lunge. And then we'll change arms. This time as you exhale, left fingertips reach down. Again, you might reach the floor, you might not. It doesn't matter. One more each way. So we'll get a nice stretch in the hip. Inhale. Exhale, reach down. My Tyrannosaurus Rex arms, they're not going to get there today. All the way up. Inhale. And last time over to the left. Exhale. Beautiful, lovely stretch. that right arm overhead. Back into that lunge as you inhale. Are we ready? Exhale, bring the hands down. So we're going to pick up that back knee and step that left foot behind the right. So we're going to tuck that left foot behind the right, coming forwards. Beautiful, left foot tucks in behind right. Lovely, gorgeous. Now, if the fingertips won't stay on the floor, just bring your hands just above your knee there, rest them on your thighs. If you've got your fingertips on the floor, maybe begin to bend that right knee and see if you can just push your hips out to the left a little bit. So we may be feeling that in your outer left hip, a little sassy sway of your hips out to the left. Beautiful. And then we'll walk the hands forwards. So we're making a little pyramid shape, hands just forwards of that right foot. Shifting the weight into that right foot, see if you can lift that left leg into a standing split. If you don't want to do that, keep both feet on the floor. So we're bringing your nose towards that right knee. You've got the hands just making that little triangle with the foot. Beautiful, then walk your hands back towards that right foot and see if you can lower that left leg back behind you so we're in a lunge. Woohoo! making you think today. Beautiful, so you've got that left leg back. Did I say right leg? I meant left leg. Sorry. We'll take a little <laughs> twist, right arm comes up towards the ceiling. If you want to lower that left knee or push the heel away from you, opening up through the chest, gorgeous. And then bring both hands down. Push the floor away, can you take that right leg up and back into a three-legged dog once more, stretching that leg up and back. And then bring yourself down, back into that downward dog and have a little pedal out through the feet. I'm just gonna turn around so I'm facing the right way. We're gonna try that with your left leg. If you wanna pop down onto all fours at any time, feel free. So this time we'll take the left leg up and back. And then we'll bend the knee and we'll circle that knee three times so with thighs brushed together before you take that knee out to the side and then maybe up towards the ceiling. Twice more, so again, you can work from fours it's not pause, is it? It's threes. <laughs> you can come down onto your hands and knees. And then we'll all pause and try taking that left knee up towards the ceiling. So you're dropping your heel down towards your buttock. Keep pushing your rib cage towards that extended leg. Beautiful. Then straighten the leg out. And then we'll step or spring or help left foot to the inside of that left hand and lower the back knee. Beautiful, ready for that little lunge flow. So I'm going to keep my back foot tucked under. Inhale, we reach up into that little crescent lunge. And as you exhale, bring fingertips down, frame the foot. Inhale as you begin to shift the hips back. And exhale, maybe straightening off through that left leg as you sink the weight back, lovely. Inhaling into that lunge, so plant the foot, sweep the arms up. Exhale as you bring the hands down, beautiful. Lift the hips as you inhale, exhale, sink the weight back. Lovely, just once more. So as you inhale, you're pushing that right hip forward. So we're beginning to open up through the front of the hip and then bring the hands down, beautiful. Inhale, we begin to lift the hips and exhale, stretch it all out. Beautiful, let's all meet in that crescent lunge. So we sweep the arms up, try and lengthen up through all four sides of the waist so we're not sinking into the foot. You're pushing that foot that left foot into the mat there, lovely. And then let's reach the left arm down. Right arm reaches overhead. So again, fingertips might reach the floor, and if not, don't worry. And then inhale all the way up and back. And then we'll change sides. So try to keep your chest square to the front of your mat. It's a little bit of balance challenge as well, isn't it? Inhale all the way up. Let's do one more each way. So a nice stretch up through the right side of the body as you reach down with the left hand. And then we change sides, inhale, reaching up. The right fingertips reaching down, maybe reaching the floor. Again, depends on arm length and how deep your lunge is. Beautiful, reaching up as you inhale. 
ready for that little standing bit. So we bring the hands down to frame the foot, lift the back knee, and then we'll step the right foot forwards, tucking it in behind the left foot. And again, if your fingertips don't reach the floor, bring your hands just above your knee there. So I'm going to try and bend that left knee a little bit more and try and push that right hip out to the right a little bit. So you're feeling a stretch in your outer hip there. Now you can stay here or walk the hands forward. So you make a little triangle shape, hands forward of that left foot. Shift the weight into that left foot and take that right leg might just hover off the floor or up towards the ceiling, dropping your head so you're bringing your nose towards that left knee. So they're in a standing split. Beautiful. And then walking the hands back towards that left foot. See if you can land that right foot so you're back in that lunge. Beautiful. Keep the right hand where it is and this time left arm reaches up so we're in a twist. That's it. Gorgeous. I know I'm making you work today. Lovely, bring both hands down and see if we can do one more, taking that left leg all the way up and back. So we take it last little bit into that three-legged dog and then bring the foot down, drop down onto all fours. And just for a moment, take a child pose. You might have your knees together or knees wide. And I'm just going to prop myself up on my wrists and give my wrists a little bit of a twizzle there. Beautiful. Oh, just take a moment there, just in that child pose, just to allow everything to settle. Breathing into the back of your body, remembering your lungs sit more towards the back of the body, so really breathing into the back of the body, the sides of the body there. It's a lovely pose, child pose, to access that breath. And then when you're ready, either coming up onto all fours, and you can do the next pose, or coming into pigeon, you can do that from fours, or joining me in downward facing dog, choice is yours. So we're going to work on the right leg first of all. So if you're with me in downward dog, left foot to the middle of the mat, right leg lifts up and back, or we can do that from force. And then we'll bend that right knee and bring your right knee to your right thumb. So your shin is diagonally placed across the mat, lovely. And sliding that left leg back, lovely. So we've got your right heel just by your left hip. If that doesn't work for you today, then you can always roll onto your right bottom and bend that back knee so you're in more of a zigzag position with the legs. It's called deer pose. So if you want to bend that back knee, feel free to, or extend that left leg back behind you. And I like to just lift my back knee and see if I can walk that left leg back a little bit more before I flatten my foot, just so I'm bringing some space to the hip. And take a moment there just to get comfy. Try and, you know, just make sure you're not rolling onto that right bottom. You've got the hips facing forwards. Beautiful. And then we'll see if we can come down onto your forearms. If that's not for you today, keep on your hands. Lovely. So we're, it's that constant kind of little assessment of what's going on across the hips there, that rolling of that left hip forwards. And if you're with me down on your forearms, again, just make sure that you're pushing the forearms a little bit into the mat so you're not sinking in the shoulders there. You can stay there, hands or forearms on the floor, or take a little twist. So taking the left arm up towards the ceiling, turning the gaze so you're looking up towards that left hand. You might find a little stretch in the front of that left hip, and then bring that forearm all the way back down to the floor. And then change sides. So we lead into that left forearm and take the right arm up. It might feel a little bit more spacious there. That's it. Beautiful. And then slowly, slowly, let's bring the forearms down or the hands down. And once more, just rest there for a breath or two again. That little check in with your left hip as it's still rolling forwards. Come back to face you, I think, there. The other side, lovely. And then walking your hands back towards you if you're on your forearms, so the chest lifts. And then lean into your right bottom. So just roll the weight into that right bottom so you're off that left kneecap. So you're more on the inside of the left knee. And see if you can just bring the heel in towards the bottom and catch that left foot or shin with your left hand, bringing your heel in towards your bottom. So you can see I'm not on the front of the kneecap. I'm leaning into the right bottom. So I'm just allowing a stretch in my quad. If that doesn't work for you, you can keep the hands down, or you can even just bend that back knee. 
lovely. Some of you with more open quads might be able to roll that left hip forward and see if you can bring your toes towards the crease of your elbow. Lovely. So be really mindful of what's going on with the knee. And then very, very slowly, it's like it's on a spring now, so we control, let's stretch that left leg back behind you. Bring both hands down, push into the hands, see if you can pick up that right knee and step back into downward facing dog. So we're going to try all of that with the left leg. So if you want to work from fours, work from fours. Or we'll take the left leg up behind you. And we'll bring that left knee to your left wrist so the shin is diagonally placed. And again, you might just sit onto your left bottom and bend your right knee. So we're in more of a zigzag, it's called deer pose. Or we stretch that right leg back behind you again. I'm just going to lift the knee and walk that leg back and physically create a little bit more space for myself before I flatten that back foot. And again, a little bit of adjustment, so we always take a moment in pigeon just to find that, that place where the hips are relatively square to the front of the mat there. You might choose to keep the hands close to you or come down onto your forearms with me. Again, just pushing the forearms gently into the floor, just working that right hip, and that constant kind of little adjustments. Beautiful. And then you might join me in that little twist. So this time we follow the right arm up, looking up towards the ceiling, stretching that right arm up. Beautiful. And then we'll bring that forearm down. And then we'll try the left arm. So reaching the left arm up. So a little bit of a stretch there. Beautiful. So that little quad stretch now. So you might just want to stay here and chill out and pigeon, feel free. Or walking your hands back towards you, lifting the chest. So this time you take a little lean onto your left bottom. So you're off the front of that right kneecap, so I'm on the inside of the knee. And I can bring the heel in towards the bottom. And I might be able to catch the foot, the ankle, and bring that foot in towards your bottom. Lovely. And those of you who are without knee injury, or maybe the quads are okay, you might again just begin to drop that right hip forwards a little bit and see if you can just bring your toes in towards the crease of your elbow. Lovely. And then you reach over and catch hold and come into mermaid. No, that'd be another day. <laughs> Beautiful. So really, really slowly release that back foot with care. It's like it's on a spring. So really protect the knee joint as you bring it down. Bring the hands down. Let's tuck that right foot under. Lift that left knee and step back into a downward dog. Woo! And then from downward dog, walk your feet to your hands or your hands to your feet somewhere in the middle. Nice squidgy walk. Ah, oh, bare the knees. Cradle the elbows and have a little sway there. Oh, crown of the head dropping down towards the floor. I can really feel my right hip this morning. It's getting a good old stretch, lovely. And then letting go of the elbows, sliding the hands up to your shins or even above your knees onto your thighs so you can push your hands into your legs, coming into that lovely flat back position. Slide the shoulders down away from the ears as you inhale. And as you exhale, let's fold down over the legs, a little bend in the knees if you need to into that flat back, so making the front body parallel to the floor as you inhale. And exhale, just surrender all the way down. And then bending the knees, let the arms dangle as you roll your way up. Take a moment, oh, so we don't get that head rush when you come up. Beautiful, lovely. I'll turn around to face you there. So Barry, I apologize, we're gonna do some balance. So. The good thing is we've got walls nearby maybe. So if you do need to come to a wall, we're going to be balancing on our left leg. So you can always come to a wall and bring your left hand up against the wall there. There you go. Beautiful. So with a wall or without a wall, depending on how balance feels, just take a moment to come to that nice mountain pose. Then we're gonna shift the weight into your left foot and bring your right knee in towards the chest. So again, if you need to just come to a wall, lovely. So you might have your hands behind the knee or in front of the knee. If you're leaning forwards to get the knee, then lift up nice and tall, bringing that knee with you. Gorgeous. 
a little bit of balance challenge. So we're going to take the left arm out to the side. Remember, you might have your hand against a wall. And see if you can open that right knee out to the side. I'm not mirroring you, I do apologize. Now I'm mirroring you, so that right leg comes out to the side there. Beautiful. Lovely. And then we'll bring that knee back through center. Can we extend both arms out to the side and take that right leg back into a warrior three? So toes might touch the floor. Those of you feeling a bit more balanced might fly into that warrior three, front body again, parallel to the floor. Beautiful, slowly, slowly. Can you bring that right knee to your chest and take the arms up towards the ceiling? You might need to touch down. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, can you straighten that right leg out in front of you? Showing you the sole of my foot, thank God it's clean. Inhale, knee to chest. And exhale, bring the foot down and the arms down. Beautiful. Sorry guys, I wasn't mirroring you on that side, but I will do on this side. So this time we're going to lift the left leg. So again, if you do need to come to a wall and use a wall, feel free. So this time you shift the weight to right leg and we bring left knee to chest. Again, if you've got to fold forwards to find the knee, lift up nice and tall. And again, you might just be bringing that right hand against a wall there if you're wibbly wobbly. We'll take the right arm out to the side this time. And then left knee opens out to the side. Really push into that right foot so you're lifted up nice and tall. Beautiful. And then bring that knee back to center. And if you can, both arms out shoulder height, we kick back with that left leg. A little softness in that right knee, lowering the body. You might bring that back foot down, that's okay. Beautiful, then can you bring the left knee to the chest and take the arms up towards the ceiling. You can touch the foot down if you need to. Inhale. And as you exhale, can you stretch that left foot out in front of you? Ooh. Knee to chest, inhale. Exhale, bring the foot down, bring the hands down. Brilliant, give the legs a little bit of a shake. Sorry, Barry, it's not over yet. <sighs> so back onto that right leg. So this time we're going to cross your right ankle over your left knee. So right ankle hooks over left knee. If that's not for you, bring the ball of the foot to the floor and just stay there, hands to heart. So you're getting a more benign stretch with the hips. If you're with me, flexing that right foot, bring the hands to the heart, take an inhale. And as you exhale, begin to bend that left knee. So you're sinking the hips back. So it's a little version of, it's called flying pigeon. I fly, my pretties, keep squeezing that right knee out to the side. And then can you extend the arms up in that wide V, palms face in. Oh, wibble wobbles. And then slowly, slowly straightening that left leg. Can you bring that right knee in towards the chest again? Beautiful. Left arm comes out shoulder height. Let's take that right knee out to the right. Push the floor away. Beautiful. Now you might want to stay there or you can hold underneath that right thigh and maybe extend the leg out to the side. A little bit of fun. Beautiful. Those of you up for a challenge, you catch hold of your big toe with first two fingers, just as you did at the beginning, and extend that leg out to the side. There's lots of movement going on. This is for fun. Woo! Beautiful. Let's not push our luck, knee to chest. And gracefully elegant, bring the foot down to the floor and have a little bit of a shake out. Oh, I can see lots of people kind of wibbly wobbly. Back onto the mat, let's try the other side, last little bit. So this time, it's left ankle over right knee, or just cross the feet, choice is yours. If you're joining me, we cross above the knee. So that left knee is open out to the side, beautiful. Hands to heart, and then we bend the knee, so we're sitting back with the hips, trying to keep that left knee open. Beautiful, feel the wobble wobbles. It's a great one to straighten the ankle as well. Maybe take the arms out and up, and that nice wide V. Oh, wibble, wobble, wibble, wobble. Lovely. And then if you can, let's rise on up, bringing that left knee in towards your chest. Left hand on the knee, right arm comes out shoulder height. Let's see if we can bring that knee out to the side. If you need to bring the foot down, feel free. If you want to have a little play, try holding underneath the thigh and maybe extending that left leg out to the side. Remember, it's all play. Some of you who want that little challenge might be able to hook big toe 
and extend that leg out to the side. You might even just keep the knee bent. Can you push the floor away? Rise up nice and tall. Breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> Beautiful and slowly and elegantly. Let's bring the foot down and have a little walk out through the feet. Fantastic, well done guys. Let's take a nice inhale, rise up nice and tall. And as you exhale, let's come down, it's that forward fold. Oh, bend the knees as much as you need to, let the head hang. And then planting the hands down, let's take two big steps back into a downward dog. And from your downward dog, walk your feet wider apart. So as you lower down onto hands and knees, we've got the knees maybe wider than the hips there. Flattening the feet, just circle the hips a few times each way. Well done, guys. I threw that little balance in for you at the end. Well done for taking the challenge wherever you got there. And then just change the direction of your circle. Ooh, beautiful. Lovely. And then when you've just loosened up through the hips, let's bring the knees together. Sitting back on your heels just for a moment and then pop your bottom to one side so you can stretch both legs out in front of you. Well done. Gorgeous. So we'll bring your right heel in towards your groin there and just take the left leg out as wide as feels comfortable and then rearrange yourself so you feel nice and square and balanced on your sit bones there. Lovely. So let's take a nice side stretch over that extended leg. So just bringing the back of that left hand to rest on your knee or your thigh. Reaching up with that right arm, take an inhale. And as you exhale, take a nice side stretch over towards that extended leg. Trying not the, to let the chest fold forward. So again, that peeling of your chest open. Lovely, trying to keep both sit bones the weight even on the floor, come up through center. And this time both hands come down to the floor. This I find really hard, so take an inhale. And as you exhale, take a little forward fold, but only so far as you can keep your sit bones grounded down and that left foot pointed up towards the ceiling. So the temptation is that we lift that left bottom. So see if you can glue the sit bones down so it's not a big move for many of us, certainly not for me. Lovely, and then walking the hands back. Let's come into that little side stretch again. So back of the hand on the shin or the thigh, reaching up with that right arm. And as you exhale, you may be fine. You can come over a little bit more. Maybe, maybe not, that's okay. Lovely, slowly, slowly, let's come all the way up through center. Just leaning into that right bottom so you can tuck that left foot back behind you coming into a zigzag right hand behind the right hip and just reach that left arm across the body looking down towards that right hand you might stay there or push the hips up lovely so we're coming into a, a nice hip stretch you can keep your bottom down and just reach that left arm overhead slowly slowly lower down take an inhale and as you exhale just turn the body towards the left coming into a gentle stretch you prefer to stretch the legs out in front of you, if that's paining the knee, feel free to do so. Lovely. Slowly come back through centre, bring the hands behind you, and then carefully stretch the legs out. Give them a little shake, and then we'll change sides. So left heel into the groin. Right leg out on the diagonal as far as feels comfortable. Again, just moving your natural cushions out of the way so you can sit up nice and tall. Back of that right hand on your shin or your thigh. Let's reach up with the left as you inhale. And exhale, sliding that hand maybe down towards your ankle, reaching up. So again, making sure that you're not closing off through the chest. So that sense of rolling that top armpit open. Lovely. And then slowly, slowly come back through center. And keeping that right foot up towards the ceiling, we plant the hands down and take a little forward fold. And again, it's, it's really hard to keep both sit bones even there. Well, I find it really hard. My temptation is I want to come a little deeper into that forward fold, but then I lift my right bottom. So if I'm going to keep my sit bones grounded, I've got to pull back a little bit from my natural inclination to want to take that forward fold deeper. And then as you walk the hands back, let's see if we freed up a little space there. So right hand onto your 
right shin or thigh, left arm reaches up. And see, maybe you might be able to come over a little more. Maybe, maybe. Lovely. If not, don't worry. Come all the way back up through centre. We take a little lead into that left bottom now, bringing the left hand down. So you can bend the knee and bring that right foot behind you. So we're in a little zigzag. Reaching that right arm across. Looking down towards that left hand, you might stay there or push the hips up. And you take the that top arm kind of back behind you. So you're coming into a gentle back bend as you push the hips forwards. Lovely, lower the hips. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, we turn the body towards the right. So we're coming into a little twist there. Beautiful, and coming all the way back through center. Just stretching the legs out in front of you, giving them a little shake. And last little bit, soles of the feet come together. And you can just hold on around your shins or your ankles. If your hips feel tight, then keep your heels a good long way away from your bottom. If your hips feel a little bit more open, we can bring the heels in a little closer. And try and relax your knees out as far as is comfortable. So if you've got your heels a long way away, you can just lean forwards, cup your toes with your hands and allow the body to yield forwards. And if your heels are a little closer, let's take a nice inhale as you sit up tall. And as you exhale, take a little lean forwards, trying to keep the back straight. So again, it might not be a big movement forwards. And then you might try just to take the arms out in front of your feet, coming onto your fingertips. And just allow your back to round a little bit. Chin drops down towards the chest. Again, trying to soften those knees. So we'll be in different variations depending on how the hips feel. Heels close or further away, depending on how hips are today. Lovely. And slowly, if you've got your arms extended, like I have, we'll walk the hands back. So we're lifting up through the chest. So we'll all meet with your shoulders above your hips. Just bring your hands to your outer knees so you can bring your knees together. And coming down onto your mat. So as you ease your way down onto your mat, let's take the arms out shoulder height and walk your feet now to the outside edges of your mat. And take your heels a little bit away from your bottom there. So again, it should feel nice and spacious across the low back. And just take a little wide legged twist from side to side. Tipping the knees gently to the left and to the right. And if that's uncomfortable on the knees, just walk your feet a little closer together. Maybe the head gently rolling from side to side. And coming back into that physical sensation, notice as you drop your knees from side to side, maybe which side feels the tightest. And pause there now. So Knees dropping either to the right or to the left. So wherever you felt there was the most resistance, just linger there for a breath or two. And then very gently, bring the knees back through centre. And do anything you need to do before we arrange the body for a moment of relaxation. So if you need to Stretch out nice and long, use that full body extension, arms and legs opening up into the space in front and behind you as you stretch out nice and long, or if you need to squeeze your knees in towards your chest, feel free. And then allow your body to find a position, placing it carefully in such a position that it feels at ease. And if there's discomfort in the body when we do our relaxation, then the mind and the body will focus on that. It's like having a toothache. It becomes your sole focus. So arranging your clothing, making sure you're warm. And then once more, just closing the eyes. And simply by closing the eyes, it's like we're, we're kind of putting the blinkers on. We're stopping all of that external stimulus that can sometimes provoke a thought pattern. So we're giving 
ourselves that message. We're turning that attention from the external world to the interior world. And we turn your attention and your focus to the body and the breath. As you begin now to take slow and conscious breaths in, full, complete breaths out. Just really notice what it's like to allow your attention to rest on these sensations of breathing. It's continuing to take these conscious, very intentional breaths. Allowing yourself just to focus on that, that breathing aspect of the experience of this moment, one breath at a time. And there's a lovely shorthand in meditation T-E-S, thoughts, emotions, and sensations. So as you allow that breath to settle again, that lovely rhythm of your breath. Just notice what kind of thoughts might be arising. Those thoughts are just moving through the sky of your consciousness, just noting those thoughts as they come up for you. Becoming again that sense of an observer. And then what emotions are present for you in this moment? And whatever is arising, it's perfectly okay. There's no right, there's no wrong way, there's no right answer. Mindfulness, meditation, whatever we want to call it, it's about rolling out this welcome mat, allowing yourself to feel what's here right now. And then that final letter, S, of sensations. Those sensations, whatever is prominent, just inviting in a reflection on the sensations that are coming up for you. Any tightness in the body, any discomfort. Just again, that gentle acknowledgement. Again, a sense of welcoming and accepting whatever is presenting for you right here, right now. And then we're ready to proceed back with the rest of our day, the rest of the week, hopefully, feeling a bit more in tune with ourselves, with our bodies, our breath. Let's begin to shift the awareness from the breath into the body, a little bit of movement into your fingers and your toes, trying not to let the mind pull you into whatever nonsense it wants to, projecting forwards or pulling you back. You might again want to explore a full body stretch before bringing your knees in towards your chest. Do whatever feels nice. And we'll meet with our knees 
gathered in towards the chest. And then whether there's space to the right or to the left of you, just rolling onto that side. And finding your way to a comfortable seated position. And we'll bring the hands into that gesture of acknowledgement of one another, that Anjali Mudra. The thumbs just nestled in towards your breastbone, so you can lift your breastbone to meet your thumbs, kind of meeting the weak, open heart, open mind, dropping your chin ever so gently down towards your chest. And thanking each other for taking the time on this Sunday morning to come together to share a practice. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'll unmute everybody. Thank you, Helen. <clears throat>